This is an external voltage regulator as found on every Chrysler from 1970 until they went to computer controlled voltage regulators. If you know the license plate number of the white Challenger I order these for, post up in the comments below. Now onto the wiring. The upper terminal in the middle gets the ignition switched power and connects to either of the field terminals. It doesn't matter which one. If you're a Shelby Dodge guy like me, the J2 circuit is the hot ticket for the power. On some models, the connector for the scanner can be used to take power off of the passenger side where I mount mine. Consult your wiring diagrams if you're unsure, but that blue J2 wire runs all over the place. The wire on the right goes to either field terminal. It doesn't matter which one. And then finally, you need to make sure that the case of the regulator has a good ground. While one can do so at the body, I prefer to run a wire to the case of the alternator where it then grounds to the head through a 6 gauge mil spec wire I run from there to the head. Here's the little harness I made up for the regulator. It has four wires coming off of the end towards the alternator. The largest terminal will be for the ground. The two number 8 terminals are for the field terminals on the alternator and the long one will get power from the J2 circuit. All of the wire is mil spec, which has a much better heat resistance in regard to the insulation and can carry more current for the gauge of wire too. The jacket is Raychem DR25, which I use primarily for the abrasion resistance, but its chemical and heat resistance are top notch also. With the regulator installed in the car, it looks like factory to anyone unaware of the original setup, and in this case tucks nicely beside the map sensor in my wife's 86 Daytona. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post up in the comments. If you would like to see anything on my channel, don't hesitate to let me know, as most of these videos come from viewer suggestions.